Hello everybody and welcome back to Valhelthia Tree. Today we make an iron golem farm for infinite iron and an enderman farm for infinite ender pearls and experience. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so today we are going to be making mob farms. So I want to set up a iron golem farm. I also want to set up a, a crazy XP farm in the end using Enderman. And we'll see where we go from there. So I want to start by setting up an Iron Golem farm. Because that should be the quickest thing to set up. Uh, because it'll be easy to move villagers and zombies and stuff. So that'll be no problem at all. So I'm just kind of thinking about putting it above our Blaze farm. But it's not too close to our actual villagers over here. Uh, I, I don't think it'll be a problem. I still say we'll be able to still spawn in. So, I'm going to build it and see if it works. I don't see why it wouldn't. So, I need to clear out some of the top up here. So, I need to get rid of all these trees. And then plan out the shape and look at a picture and how to build the thing. Because I can't remember how to build it off the top of my head. Um, which mob farm am I going to go with? Am I going to go with the one with the villagers either side? Or am I going to go with the one I did in all the fabric? The one in all the fabric was good. I might do the one of all the fabric. Alright, if that's the case then I kind of know what I need to do. Right, let me clear out some space here and we'll get to work. Okay, I've cleared away a lot of the trees that were on the top here. I kind of expanded it a bit so because it was like a weird odd shape. There was like a big massive hole here so I filled that in. And I decided to put down the shape of the funnel where the iron golems are going to fall. Now I need to think, think how tall am I going to put this. Because I don't want the iron golems to like spawn on top of that tree or something. So I'm wondering should I go up maybe about like 20 so blocks. I think at the max is actually like 20 blocks you go up. So should I go up maybe this high? Maybe a couple more. Yeah I'd say this high is probably good enough. How high is that? Because then that will be the max height and then there will be a bottom part underneath it where the villagers are going to reside. Yeah, so this is probably big enough. So I need to now build up the height of this now. If only there was a builder's wand, but unfortunately there's not. Alright, so this is the funnel now we have that the iron golems are going to fall down through. So the shape of the way we're going to do this is this thing needs to be 7 out this way and then eight out that way and it needs to be at least three wide here so I'm gonna build out one two three four five six seven and then I need to build it out like that and now I need to go eight that way but I need to go up a block so this is like that and then I have to go eight so this is one two three four five six seven Eight. and now I just need to fill this in so now we've got this layout and I was just thinking wait with the water I know there was a couple of issues where golems could get stuck on the edge but you could put zombie like out here which would entice them to come this way but I was just thinking why don't we use vector plates then instead of water we could use water to push them from up here down but then when they get to here, we get a vector plate pushing in this way, pointing in this way to a center point, which then runs down this way and then drops them down. I wonder would that be a better idea than just having water flowing than a sign stopping it with a, and then having lava at the bottom. So I think we might go with that instead. So what I want to do is right here, I want to build this up kind of more like this. So it won't matter really because now I have to make fence walls which will now surround this entire thing to stop them from walking off the edge and to stop the water from overflowing. And then I actually have to go underneath and then build rooms for villagers. So I need to get some glass because I want to put glass in the front so you can see them falling all the time. So we need to get ourselves some glass. I'm just going to use regular glass blocks. Okay, I don't think I actually need that many glass blocks. I might grab tree stacks just to be on the safe side. 
Now, if we look up wall, can I make fence walls out of this? I can. Okay, I'm going to make about two stacks of walls. Okay, so that's good. Uh, is there anything else we need? We need a bucket of water. So I need two buckets full of water. There we go. And we're going to need our mob imprisonment tool. We're also going to need a name tag. Luckily enough, I have one. I'm pretty sure our librarians, with one of them down there, will sell us a, I don't know, a, what's this thing called? A name tag. There we go. Uh, so what are we going to call our zombie? He is pretty much bait, so do we call him like golem bait, or do we call him like a name, like Bob? Um, hmm. I'm going to call him golem bait. That was a loud anvil sound. Anyway. So now, we have to go catch ourselves a zombie, so I'm going to try and fly around and catch a zombie before it turns daytime. As you can see, it, the sun is starting to go down. I don't want one with armor now. Ah, there's a zombie. Coming in! Yoink! Run. Alright, so we've got ourselves our zombie now, so I need to make sure I have the area for him to, well, sit in while I... So he doesn't burn. But I probably should put a bucket of water in that as well, and as well anyway. So we have our walls. So let me go down and put down our walls now. Alright, so we got the walls put down now. So what's going to happen is we're going to put the water down right here. Uh, space it out so we make an infinite water source. Water's going to flow all the way to the edge. The iron golems are going to drop off. They're going to have vector plates pointing this way and this way. So, the only thing I hope that doesn't happen is the golem goes to here, and it gets stuck like this. Hopefully that won't happen. If that does, well, I think actually... Uh, no, I can't do that. I was going to say pull up another block, but then that will just stop him there, like this. So, we'll just have to hope he doesn't get stuck. I'll have to make sh uh, keep an eye on it every once in a while, and if they do, I just have to fix it. But now what I want to do is put this glass in. There we are. Glass is in. So, all we need now is our vector plates. 19 might be enough. Um, it might be close. I think we might actually need 27 of them. Or 21. Because of the way this is. But we'll see. So, we want these ones to point in this way. Uh, not like that. We want these ones to point this way. Yeah, I need two more. And then they'll get pushed off and die. Well, they'll fall down into a pit of lava and that's how they'll die. Alright. Oh, wait. Nope. Not this way. I forgot. I had to put it this way. So they'll get pushed off. They'll fall down into some lava and a hopper. And then it'll be an ender chest in the center. Which will funnel all of the stuff into our system. Right. Now I need to build the underground, under section, where the villagers are going to be. Okay, so this is how the villagers are going to be set up. We're going to have a villager in here, in here, and in here. Now our zombie is going to sit in here. So I need to open this up. I need to put a bucket of water down, just be on the safe side. I don't want the zombie to get burnt, even though he should not be able to get burnt. Just to be on the safe side. And I actually need to open up all of these ports. And then I'm going to fill these ones in with glass right here. Just so, well, <laughs> nothing happens. So the zombie goes in here. Name him Golem Bait. And now I can block this up. And he should stay there forever now because he's name tag. Now we just need to get ourselves three villagers and three beds. Alright, bed number one. Uh, excuse me, zombie. I'm just gonna. Oh, oops. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna go around like this. Just make sure you don't get out somehow. Bed number two. And bed number three. So the villager should be able to walk up and stand up here, which is fine because they'll run away, come back, see him, run away, come back. Because once you stand up here, technically the zombie's no longer in their line of sight. So, I just need to get myself three villagers now. So which one do you want to be the first subject? The one running away. 
No, not the golem. You, sir. Come here. Alright, all I have to do is put the villager down inside. So, he is scared by the zombie, but he is fine. So, he drops down, sees him. So, technically, the iron golem should get spawned soon. Uh, hopefully, the one will get spawned. Villager number two. I think it, there needs to be at least two villagers for an iron golem to be called. So, you can see, they that one just slept in a bed. This guy just slept in a bed. So that's actually perfect. I want them to sleep in the bed, get scared, and then an iron golem should be called. Hopefully. Alright, last villager going in. I forgot to re-enable my jetpack. Back up here, plug that. Alright, let's just hope and see. There might need to be a full day cycle or a night cycle before an iron golem will spawn. And I really do hope one will spawn. Oh, look, as that, the Iron Golem did spawn. Perfect. We just need to set up the way to kill him now. Oh, wow, we've already got three Iron Golems? Number four. Oh, okay, I didn't realize it spawned that many. Well, the thing is, um, you guys are in the way. Please don't kill me, Golem. Even though my armor is good, my sword is not doing enough Vorpal damage like it should. Um, and I don't have liquid meat anymore. And they keep spawning. Right, I have to come up with a different plan. I need to stop them from falling down for a moment. Alright. So this is what I want to happen. Ender chest is going to go here. Hoppers are going to all... No, not like that. Hoppers are all going to connect down into this one chest. And the rest of the hoppers are just going to connect like this. And then they're just going to rotate around till they make it in. There we go. Now... I need to put signs across like this. Now I need to break this cobblestone. Hello, golem. You are technically in my way. Put a bucket of lava down on top. Now the lava should flow. Not uh, flow down in between the signs down onto the hoppers. So that should leave a space for them to fall and die if this guy doesn't kill me. Why is my sword not doing too much damage? Okay, I had to sleep because the golem or the phantoms were annoying me. But as you can see now, we have a golem dying. The iron should go down into here and we should see it. Yes, it is. Perfect. Now you need to die. About time. Now you need to die. There we go. Alright, so that's it. As you can see, golems fall down, they burn, they die, the iron goes into our system. I got a turkey egg. Nothing. Right, let's go build this Enderman XP farm. Alright, so we're at the end portal now. So all we have to do is jump in and build away from the end island. So, I've got myself a waystone to be able to teleport to the spawners. I've got some spruce trap doors. Ooh, I forgot some carpet, actually. So, if I get some carpet, because I need the carpet to protect. Oh, yeah, and that's another thing. I need a minecart. Minecart. There we go. I'm going to need a piece of rail. Uh, there we go. Wool. Ooh, nice bit of wool. And I'll just grab like nearly 40 of us. We're also going to need walls. So I'm probably going to need a crafting table over there as well. So I'll just make a quick one. Uh, is that it? I think that might be all we need. We can always come back if we need something. Actually, you know what we do need? Water. And a lot of water. Because the Endermen are just going to teleport around the place like crazy if we do not bring water to make 
like a water dome around the little area we're going to be sitting in. Alright, I think that's all we need now. So, end portal. Come up here into the portal. And probably straight off the back of it here, like literally now directly east, we should go. Uh, because our end islands are off this way. So, if we go out this way to an empty space, we should have no problem. We need to go far enough away to where the end island is not going to be visible. So, let's build. I'm going to build it all out of cobblestone. Alright, we're pretty much as far out as we can right now. Endermen are starting to spawn. But if we look at our chunk borders, you can see we are not in the center. Um, and we kind of want to be in the center. Because I looked up how far away do Endermen aggro from an Endermite. And it's 64 blocks. So we need to build a platform that goes out 64. And 64 by 64 by 64. Probably less a couple because the Endermite is not going to be like right on the on this block here for going at 64. It'll be back a couple uh, to allow for like the hole where they're going to run in and fall. And technically since this border is not an odd number where it's even, there is no technical center point. So we're going to make a hole that is 2 by 2 Or no, a 3 by yeah, 2 by 2 hole. And that should be enough for them to all run in and fall down. 3x3 three three would be ideal, but you know what? A 4x4 four four hole would be grand. Actually, why am I making this out of cobblestone? I wanted to use the nicer uh, cobblestone block. God damn. Okay, I'm going to have to break this off. Anyway, I'm going to build this. Um, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to go down to Y level as well. Actually, does that matter? I actually don't think it matters. So, yeah, I'm going to build down this platform. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I ended up not making the platform just yet because I was building it halfway through. I realized, wait, no, I'm supposed to build the bottom, go up 42 blocks, and then build the big platform. So I've built this little box that's covered in water that will stop the Endermen from teleporting onto it. They cannot teleport inside because, well, of course, the room is only too tall. I set up a waystone now to be able to teleport home. Which I did realize I forgot an ender chest, but that's fine. But what we need to do, actually, let me get an ender chest. All right, ender chest. There we go. Um, yeah, perfect. So let's head back to Enderman Spawner. Okay, good. We didn't fall through the ground or anything. Put you there, and then everything hooking onto it like that. You know, I'm actually going to break these two blocks. Get up here. Break these again and face them into this thing like that. There we go. That's better. So, we need to go up 42 blocks. 42 or 43. I'm going to go 42 because that should leave the Enderman pretty much on 1 HP. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, I need to go up another 38 blocks. Here we go. Alright, so this is what we've gotten so far. Oops, I need to remove that block. But, I've now built out a platform, a small platform. It's only, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 by uh, 16. So, a few things we need to do is we need to, of course, put down trapdoors right here. This is so the Endermen, like, just run off the edge. And now what we need to do is set up the Endermite. And now I want the Endermite visible from the edge here, but I don't want the Enderman getting to him. So I need to actually remove these. Uh, I may have built it a little too high, so I need to remove them and build it at a different level. So what's going to happen is, if I grab myself my carpet, I'm going to stack the carpet three tall. That way, nothing can jump onto this carpet and they cannot teleport onto it. But the Endermite is going to be visible through the carpet. So I need to break this carpet and this carpet. Come over here. Box this in now. Like this. And there. No. Nope. There we go. Now what I need to do is put down a rail. I need a two rail. Um. I wonder can I make this work. Uh, no, I need two rail. Alright, I'm gonna go get another rail. 
Um, I come back and there's a blobfish. Bye, blobfish. So, second rail. Put you there. Put the minecart there. I forgot the name tag for the endermite. One second. <laughs> Alright, so now I've got an ender, uh, name tag for him called Enderbase. Now I just need to keep throwing ender pearls on the ground here until an endermite spawns. There we go. I need to now name tag him. Push the minecart into him. Please get in the minecart. There you go. Break the rail. Now come over here. Break this. And break the rail. There we go. Now just surround him in carpet. Need to break this down. I don't see anything being able to attack this guy now. So nothing should be able to get over to him. In case, I'm going to put carpet there. Alright, physically nothing should be able to get to him. And if they do, they deserve it. Alright, all that's left now is to actually build this platform. So I'm going to be busy for the next like 20 minutes. And with that, our spawner is done. Um, I actually had to move the Endermine up a block because the, zo the zombies? The Endermine at the back could not see him because of the fence. So if anything was over there, the, this stone brick wall was actually blocking the line of sight. But now he's up above it, so everything should be able to see him. As you can see, all the ones over there are aggroing him. Even the ones right there. The aggro is 64 blocks away, but... I didn't. I couldn't figure out why they weren't going for it until I realized they were. He was too low down, so that's why I only made the platform about like three chunks wide. I mean, it's still good. Like, there's plenty of room for them to spawn. It's five chunks this way by three chunks. I ended up getting rid of two chunks because, like I said, they couldn't see over this wall. But I didn't know that was the issue until I raised him up, because the ones at the back were still not aggroing him. Until I raised it up. But now we've got a pretty functional XP farm for Endermen. So if we come down here you can see how many Endermen are already here. And if I kill him. Look at all the Ender Pearls I just got. Plus I've got like 10 extra levels just there. So now we have this set up. So there's one thing left to do. Why? Okay that weird. XP. Grab that one. So I need to go home. And now I need to make another mob crusher. So of course mob crusher requires a pity machine frame. We're going to need a simple one. So extract all that. Give me myself some plastic because it needs two plastic. Gold gear. Alright. And come over into our factory area. Uh, do I still have latex in this? I probably should do. Do I? No I don't. Okay. So add all that in. Grab myself a new bucket. To grab some latex. Bug it. Latex in. How much iron have we got? Because it's been a while since I checked. 1.9k. Not bad. So this locks the inputs. Okay, now I understand where this comes from. Yeah, what I actually had to do is... In the video I said like I updated to the newest pack. The next episode I actually had to downgrade the version. Because my game would not stop crashing. Like, every five minutes my game would crash. Luckily enough, I got through the entire recording in the new update without crashing. But there was just so many issues that it just didn't want to work. But there is a new update out as I'm recording this. So I need to finish this episode and I'm going to update to the new version. Because apparently there's a they fixed the issue that's wrong with the previous version. So, simple machine frame. Now we need to upgrade this to advanced. Okay, just need another piece of plastic. I don't know why it never gives us the actual full amount. All that in. Now, instead of latex, actually, I should have bro broke it first. Latex or dissolution chamber, put that in. All of this. There we go. Now, I just need to grab myself a bucket of pink slime. Now, with the slime inside, almost done. Wait, where's the speed upgrade gone? Weird, I, I could have sworn there was a speed upgrade in here. They all have their speed upgrades, so I don't know why you lost it. But anyway, now if we look up Crusher, we should be able to make a Mob Crusher, no problem, just no, 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 Gold Gear. Mob Crusher, there we go. 
Now, if I look up tank, and make myself an ender tank, uh, I'm going to need two of these. I'm going to get some green, or, yeah, green dye. Uh, I need to make a little bit more. Uh, three. Uh, is that enough? I would like another tree green dye. Is there another way of making dye? All right, just a quick botania duplication glitch there. Uh, it's not really a duplication glitch. It just, it's an easy way of getting it. You just bone meal a petal on the ground and it grows into a tall one. It breaks it down into four petals and then I just make more dye. Right, I need power, so I need a point. I'm actually going to need a couple of points because I want to chunk load the entirety of the actual enderman area. So, what am I out of? I need to make more flux cores, okay, and then I can make more of these. I don't know how many I need, but you never know. I'm always going to need flux points. So, we should be able to... I actually do need a range upgrade or an add-on. Only the smallest tier. It just adds one extra on. That's all I need, just cobblestone. So, I just need a piece of redstone. Now, I need myself another bucket for some latex. Because, of course, we need latex for this. To get you, break you, put you back down. Two glass, two redstone, four cobblestone, with some latex. Should make us a tier one add on. And then we should be good to go. There we go. And now, what I want to do is actually come over to our, end, our tank over here that is storing all of our experience, which is now on 4,000. Jeez. Okay, so get the green dye. Tree green die across the top. Break this. Point it this way. Rotate it to extract. Or point in. So the tank is going to enable on the north. There we go. Now we need to do the same thing with the crusher in the end. Alright, so technically we do not need these hoppers. But I'm going to leave them there just in case. So mob crusher go there. Turn, plug you in. Now we grab ourselves a point. Which I'm going to put right here. We turn on our network, enable chunk loading. So I should chunk load this entire area where the, the endermen go down the way. As you can see, it's now killing them, and we are getting now fluid. So I want to come in here. I want to put this tank down on the ground first, because I need to die it. There we go. Pick it up. Put the tank in here. Now set the fluid. This is the north, so essence is going to be pushed out of the north. And every other direction is going to be disabled. Output items, disable everything except for the bottom where it's going to push the ender pearls out into this ender chest. And as you can see, they're just slowly dying. It's gaining us experience and it is beautiful. Right, so I'm going to end it there. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. And I hope to see you in the next episode. So goodbye.